Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This time we're going to do something a little bit different. It wasn't initially on my radar, but with some of the responses I'd received in the different forums that I was doing research with on the earlier uh, YouTube and uh, postings I'd done on my website, I found out there was a firewall uh, service that hadn't shown up on my radar yet. And I decided to go ahead and get that went in at this point. Out of fairness to the others who did point out that you know, this was a better way of doing it. Well, it's, you know, it's a way of doing it. I was simply showing with Intelnet and SSH, there way, were ways of controlling within those services, access control. And when it's just a single service, yeah, that's fine. That's probably the simplest way to go. But when you start targeting multiple services or you want some granularity that they may not have as easily, then going in with something uh, like UFW is definitely a way to go. So let's go ahead and we'll get logged in here. And you see, I've already gotten this one SD card set up because it's got my standard banner that I like to use to remind me what that card is, is set up for. So we will go ahead and we will get the UFS, if I can type, uh, installed. And it'll take it just a second to, uh, to get in place here. My uh, connection is running a little bit slow tonight, but... Hey, at least I have a connection, so that's nothing to worry about. It's already gotten it downloaded. It's doing the configuration process. And it's going to go through and set up a series of files to, to get things up and running. Not too big a deal. Actually, it's, it's very straightforward with some of the other Linux uh, services that I've dealt with over the past few years. This one actually makes it very uh enjoyable to work with because you don't have to learn a, a whole new syntax at least not to the level that some systems like to uh, to have you jump through and with any firewall you know you may need to do things a little bit differently and this is going to be very much of a learning process for me because i've worked with different firewalls over the years but nothing that uh, you know that i can't get past i've done things like printing out the man page i've looked for uh, other references because some I've seen would reference commands that are not in the version I've got. Supposedly I've got the latest one. So, you know, it's just going to be a process and that'll be some of the postings I will do over the coming weeks to uh, help you see different things that I found and maybe save you a little bit of hassle along the way. So we've got uh, UFW already in place. So we will double check its status, which right now, having just been installed, that's exactly the status that you see. It is not active at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a rule put in place to allow SSH but not allow anything else. So use our pseudo command UFW allow from 192.168.1.1. If you give it just an IP address like you're seeing here, it's going to assume a host only situation. It's only when you add a subnet mask after it that it knows that it's for a specific range. So that that's something that's that's helpful to know. And then we'll go to any port and 22 for SSH. Now something that you will want to do is turn on logging, which that is all you do is just sudo UFW logging. And by default, that will bring it up at a level of low, which for most things is fine because that's simply going to let you see when the firewall is denying traffic for a particular reason. When you're testing on a new rule, what I like to do is set it to a higher level. So you just kind of see the background, what's going on, and see when a rule is allowing something to pass, when it isn't. So in this case, for just the time being, we'll go ahead and set it to high. Okay, now that we've got that part done, let's go ahead and get UFW enabled. And it'll come back here in just a moment, and it's already ready. Now, what the enable command does for you is it not only turns up the firewall for this time, but automatically sets it up so that anytime you boot up your Raspberry Pi, it will automatically have it in place. So what we'll go ahead and do just as confirmation is we'll run the status command. 
and that will show us that we have one rule in place. It's for SSH, and it will only allow traffic from that IP address that's mentioned. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go test that access. So first we'll do is we'll go in with Secure Shell. And there it comes back. And we're up and running. So if we go through here and do a tail, which normally I use cat a lot, but in this case I'll use tail because it will do literally just the last few lines of the file. So var log messages. And it shows you where it allowed it in. So the audit is a good, or allow or audit also is, is telling you what's going on, but the allow is the one we're actually looking for because that's the one that actually let the session go through. So now we will go through and uh, ter properly terminate that session and we'll go back in with Telnet. And it's thinking about it. So meanwhile, now what we can go do is we'll do another tail and now you're seeing it block. So this is doing exactly what it should. And if you don't do the logging level high, like I said earlier, you're only going to see uh, the block situation. So when I'm working with something, testing under rule, I always like to see both sides of the conversation. So this is a basic firewall setup. There's some other ideas that I'm already uh, working through an outline for that you should see over, over the coming days and weeks with this and uh, some other ideas because I'm really excited with the potential for what the Raspberry Pi has to do and what it can help in, in doing uh, network troubleshooting and who knows, we may even uh, get into some penetration testing. So thank you for your time in uh, watching the video and reading what's on my website. If you have any further questions or want to reach me, you can go to www.rodnutter.com. Thank you very much for your time.